Thank you very much. My name is Ariel Fellner from Ben Gurion University, Israel. Uh, this work is a joint work with uh, Sven Koenig's group in the University of Southern California. Uh, I was there on sabbatical, and this is time to thank Sven and his group for the wonderful hospitality and the fruitful uh, time. I would like to uh, mention Zhao Yang Li. She uh, worked closely with me on this. Uh, she has major contributions to this work. She performed all the experiments and had many ideas, as well as all the others. Okay, uh, it's a short talk, so I'll be now very short. Uh, CBS, it's a conflict-based search for multi-agent pathfinding, only uses current costs, like G cost in A star. Now, we add admissible heuristics for the first time, and we know that using F equals G plus H is better than just using F equals G. That's the talk. Let's, let's uh, show so, uh, some more details. So, the multi-agent pathfinding problem is defined on a graph. Uh, there is a set of K agents. Each of them has a start state and a goal state. Uh, we discretize the time, and at each time step, an agent can either move or wait at its current location. It moves to an adjacent location. The task is uh, to find a solution, which is a set of paths, one for each agent. And, of course, we have constraints that paths should not conflict. Uh, the most uh, pure scientific uh, definition of this is that agents cannot be in the same location at the same time, but there are more sophisticated uh, definitions uh, uh, to, to this problem. But I will only talk on the basic uh, definition of this problem today. And the target is to minimize the cost of the solution. And a few more assumptions that I will make. We are talking about a centralized solver. It is solving it offline and we are seeking, uh, in this talk at least, the optimal solutions only. And the uh, cost, we, are, we want to minimize the sum of the time steps of the individual agents uh, from getting from their start state to their goal state. So motivation for this problem, there are so many real world uh, applications to multi-agent pathfinding and uh, you could see a number of them. Um, Let's move on. How do we optimally solve multi-agent pathfinding? There are many, many, many uh, directions. Uh, I think we can classify them into two classes. Reduction-based solvers, where you take uh, this problem and reduce it to a known uh, problem in computer science, like SAT, answer set programming, uh, uh, interge in, uh, integer linear programming, and so on. And other methods are search-based. There is a uh, a nice uh, line of work in the A star family to solve this. Uh, but today we would like to focus on a, a, a slight, uh, somewhat different search algorithm called CBS, conflict based search. Uh, it was introduced by Guni Sharon, who I had the honor to be his PhD advisor. Uh, his PhD was on, on, on this algorithm. Um, uh, I will explain in a very high level how this algorithm works and then the contribution that we have uh, today. So, uh, here is our example problem. We have two agents, those uh, mice up, up uh, S1 and S2, and they want to get to their uh, pieces of cheese. Uh, if each of, one, each of them goes uh, individually, then the sum of individual uh, costs here is six, because everyone can get to its uh, goal location in three moves. However, there is a bottleneck at location C at time step two. Uh, so, uh, the optimal solution is that one of them has to wait, let the other pass. So the optimal solution here is seven, and let's see how CBS solves it. So the basic idea of CBS is to add to, uh, um, to the notion of conflict and constraints. A conflict is a case where agent A and agent B are both located at location X at time step T. A constraint, in fact, it's a negative constraint, which means agent A cannot be we are, not, we are not allowing agent A to be in location X at time step T. So a conflict can be resolved by either adding uh, a conflict to, uh, to the first agent or to the second agent. The very high level idea of CBS is that we plan for each agent individually. We then validate those plans. We simulate them to see if uh, they are legal. If not, which means there is a conflict, so we take the conflict and we split it. Uh, we can either constraint A to avoid the conflict or constraint B, and if we want to be optimal and complete, then we have to uh, consider both possibilities, and this is what we do in uh, what we call the constraint tree. Uh, and the constraint tree, we actually solve, uh, we, we expand nodes in the constraint tree according to a best first order, as follows. What's in the nodes? 
So in each of the nodes, we have a set of individual constraints for each agent. Second, we have a solution, is a set of paths for each agent uh, with, uh, uh, that are consistent with the individual constraints. And then the cost of that path. So for example, uh, you see here the, uh, the, the root, the root of the CT node. There are no constraints. The cost is six because we take the individual shortest path of cost six, three and three. Each one goes directly. Now we are starting to do a best first search on these three. So we expand the root, we validate the path, and then we see that there is a conflict at location C. Both agents want to be at location C at time step 2, T2, so we do not allow it, so we expand the node and we split it, and we generate two children. Let's look on the left child. The left child, we constrain uh, uh, agent A from being there, so agent A now has to be replanned, uh, such that it is not allowed to be at location C at time step 2, so it waits at location A uh, uh, one time step. Uh, sym symmetrically, this is done in the uh, uh, right uh, child to agent 2. So uh, we are going on a best first order. We expanded the root. So now we have in our open list two nodes with cost of 7. Let's expand the left child. Now we simulate it, and this is the goal. So because it's a best first order, we can stop and we have the optimal solution. That's the main idea of a conflict-based search, CBS. Improvements to do CBS. There are many, many, many possible angles. People are still working today on improving, uh, on improving CBS. So uh, uh, Guni Sharon, uh, the same student, uh, um, in one of our following paper, uh, 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 introduced the idea of meta-agent CBS. Uh, um, Sometimes we want, uh, when agents have many, many conflicts, we merge them together into an entity we call a meta-agent, and uh, the high-level treats a meta-agent just like a single agent, but inside there are many, many individual agents. Of course, I will not go into details. Three years later, uh, another student in, in our group, Eli Boyarski, introduced three enhancements. The first one was merge and restart. We understood that sometimes after you merge agents, let's just throw everything and start from scratch, but have this meta agent as an agent. And then he had two other uh, uh, improvements, one of them called bypass conflict. Sometimes you do not have to split, you can avoid splitting. And the third one, which is uh, important for us today, is to prioritize conflict. Uh, if you see in, in line three, if the agents conflict, then you know split it. But which conflict? What if we have many, many, many conflicts? We have to prioritize or to choose which one. So uh, uh, I would like to talk about this. Uh, so. In that paper, in the ICBS, Improved CBS, we uh, classified conflicts into three, uh, uh, three classes. Cardinal conflict is where the cost of the plan in each of the agents, in each of the children, must be at least one more than the current cost. So for example, uh, the conflict at uh, location C is cardinal because uh, one of the agents for sure will have to do one more step in either of the children. A semi-cardinal conflict, if, if it is only for one child, for example, if we had this X node, then while agent 2, uh, in order to avoid the conflict, uh, will have to uh, wait, agent 1 can also have a path of 3. So only one agent has to increase the cost. This is a semi-cardinal conflict. Um, so uh, the idea of, of uh, uh, how to prioritize, if we have many, many conflicts, let's choose to split uh, uh, on a cardinal conflict because it has a, it's, it, it's a hard conflict and we must split it at some point. Let's do it now. And uh, this is like a very fast glance on the experimental results on ICBS. You could see it's the red line. It is doing much, much better than, than previous algorithms, both in the CBS family and others. So now we want to improve upon that. Now, uh, it, it looks like all, uh, everyone who worked on CBS only used the G cost of agents. Here, okay, the cost of a node was only the G cost. Let's add admissible heuristics to that, okay? And so, in fact, uh, we are going to use G plus H just like A star is improving upon Dijkstra. Only with A star it was a new idea and, you know, we know that H exists. So let's do it for CBS. So how do we add uh, admissible heuristics to CBS? So the main point here is that a cardinal conflict is in fact an admissible heuristic of one. Because if I have a cardinal conflict, I know for sure that one of the agents will have to go at least one more than the current cost. 
Now, what if I have many, many cardinal conflicts? How do we admissibly aggregate cardinal conflicts? Let's introduce the conflict graph. The nodes are the agents, edges are cardinal conflicts. Now we want to admissibly take cardinal conflicts from this graph. So we have four heuristics are, which are relatively straightforward. Uh, let's try to find these joint cardinal conflicts, or in fact, let's do matching on the graph. So our heuristic H1 is just doing greedy matching. Finds an edge, adds one to the heuristics, throws away the two agents, and go further. H2 is more complicated. We looked for the maximum matching of this. But if you look uh, deeper, you could see that a vertex cover of the conflict graph is also an admissible heuristic because for each edge, one of the agents must go at least one, so that's a vertex cover. A vertex cover is an admissible heuristic. H3 is doing it greedily. Uh, uh, we have a lower bound on that. And H4 is actually doing the optimal minimum vertex cover. So vertex cover on a conflict graph or heuristic is a nice idea, but it was done before. By whom? By myself. <laughs> in my PhD uh, back in the early 2000s, and then we had a nice paper in JER on that. Uh, exactly, you see that's exactly the, the picture from, of that triangle from that paper. This is in fact based on an even earlier paper by Korf in AAAI in 96, where they took conflicts and tried to aggregate them somehow. It was also done by uh, Pumering, Roger, and Helmert in Ichikai 13 in the context of uh, of uh, uh, um, classical planning where the text here also describes this triangle and says let's do a vertex cover. So in fact those ideas were just there and uh, all, all, all we had to do is just to, to, uh, to place them in the context of CBS. Um, I'll, I'll go faster here. Well, you say well vertex cover is hard but it turns out that the conflict graph is relatively very sparse and we can easily, uh, very fast, find the vertex cover of that. Experimental results. Uh, so we had many, many uh, domains to work with. Uh, I'll show you an example. It's on an 8 by 8 grid with 10 agents. Uh, on the left side, you could see the success rate, uh, also called coverage. Uh, the blue line below is the best CBS version, you could see that ICBS is much better. Uh, we, uh, I only show your experiments with uh, H1 and H4 because they perform relatively the same. If you look on the last line in the table, uh, this is for the problems that could be solved by everyone, you can see in the expanded nodes that CBS is doing uh, 200,000 nodes. ICBS, before adding H, is already very strong. It's like a factor of 10 faster. When we add heuristics, we have another factor of five. You look on time, we do not pay a lot on time to, to calculate the heuristic. And more experimental results showing the same thing. There is a little pitfall, I will go over it very fast. If you have zero heuristics, sometimes adding a heuristic uh, is not a good idea. It, it can happen anywhere when you do heuristic search. It also happened for us, but relatively only on those dots above this line. May, most of the, uh, the domains did not have this problem. So to summarize, we have shown first evidence that adding H to CBS works well. In the future, we want to build heuristics for meta-agent CBS. Maybe we can have better heuristics uh, than using just cardinal conflicts. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of literature in the planning community on very fancy heuristics. I'm sure that many of them might be applicable to CBS. And of course, there are many, many real-world versions of CBS that adding more constraints to the domain and more assumptions. How do we add our heuristics to that? Thank you very much. Um, so my question is, can you relax, if you want to relax optimality to suboptimality, just okay. like adding an inflation factor in A star to the heuristic, and then you get bounded suboptimality, can you do something similar here? Absolutely. There is a very nice line of work that taking all these algorithms and trying to solve the problem suboptimally. And of course, all the known tricks that we can do with heuristics, like weighted A star and all that, can certainly be applicable here in the future. Okay, thank you. 